count it up, count it up, count it up, count it, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it. Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. Um, first things first, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you have not followed me on Instagram at Aisha SRNA, go ahead and do that as well. All right, so let's just get into this video. This video is about anesthesia math. More specifically, the math that nurse anesthetists and anesthesiologists use on a daily basis. Now, um, that kind of differs from when you are in school and you're fresh and you're learning the reasons, the ins and outs of the math, the chemistry, um, physics. There's a difference. Um, however, I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. One, I get questions all the time about what type of math and how hard it is. But two, most importantly, I want you guys to kind of get a feel for what we are doing every single day. In addition to watching a patient, watching the blood pressure, watching the heart rate, um, figuring out their oxygenation status, improving their oxygenation status, managing their blood pressure, how we can manage their blood pressure. This math is also required while you're doing all of those things. Um, yeah, you have time to set up your room in the beginning and it's quiet and you're the only one, you're jamming, you listen to music, but in the middle of the case, you're also required to do this math. And yeah, that might sound pretty difficult um, and you should be thinking like, oh man, that might be hard. And while when you get into it and you start doing it every day, it becomes a little bit easier. I don't want to remove that aspect of the wow um, because I always say this to people, anesthesia is super humbling. The moment that you think you are just, you know, king of the world, nothing can top you, nothing can stop you, I think that's when issues happen. So as long as you're humble and you do, you do have that wow and respect for anesthesia, all things are learnable. You can be taught a lot of things. It's just practice and working at it. All right, so let's really get into it. Most of, now I can pretty confidently say that most of the anesthesia math that is required on a daily basis is algebra. The basic fundamentals of algebra are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So those are like your fundamentals. In algebra, you are usually solving for a factor of some formula. So sometimes you're doing simple addition, you're doing simple subtraction, division, multiplication or sometimes you are solving for something in the operating room. Now later in the video, I am going to kind of tie this all together by giving you like real world anesthesia examples. Um, and this is where you're using addition and subtraction. What was the point difference in the heart rate before and after induction? That's a simple subtraction from what you saw previously to what it is now. So let's say when you, right before inducing, you were at 110. And after induction, you were at 90. 110 minus 90 is 20. Oh. So here's an instance where you'd be using multiplication and division. In the operating room, we strive to keep our patient's blood pressure within 20% of their normal. Normal. Um, and we can do this easily by using their systolic and diastolic pressure as well as their MAP. Now, um, it's easy to just use their MAP and calculate 20% of that. However, sometimes you may not even have the map, or sometimes you're pre oping your patient and you want to figure it out on your own. That requires you to multiply your diastolic by two, add that to your systolic, and then divide that by three. Yes, you are doing that in your head. So let's say your blood pressure is 120. And we know the formula for map, or the formula that I use for map, your systolic plus two times your diastolic. Okay, and then because it's an average, your mean arterial pressure, and it's three parts, you're dividing by three. So let's do it with this blood pressure. You have your systolic, which is 120, plus two times your diastolic, which is 160. 120 plus 160 is 280. 280 divided by three. So, you know, easy math, 28 divided by three, that can go in nine times, nine times three is 27, that leaves you with the one or the 10, which would be three, because three times three is nine, which leaves you with one left over, but we're not doing all that. The map is 93. So, so remember we're doing 20% above and below their baseline or normal. An easy way that I figure out what 20% of any number is, is to do 10% or one tenth of that. 
And when you're dealing with, um, you know, numbers of double digits, it's really easy. Um, 10% of, you know, I don't know what that is. 10% of 93 is 9.3. And since it's 20%, it's double that. So it's 9.3 times 2, 18.6. Now it's 20% above and below. So you are subtracting 18.6 for 93 and adding 18.6 to 93. You'll want to do 93 plus 18.6 to find your upper limit. And you're going to do 93 minus 18.6 to find your lower limit. For me, how I do these type of things in my head is I like to work in whole numbers, numbers that are close to 10, 20, 30, close to 100. So I look at this and I say 93, that's seven away from 100. Let me add that. I added seven to this to get to 100, which means I'm gonna take seven away from this, which would be, leave me at 11. So I would know that this is 111. You don't ever see point anything on your screen when, when it comes to your blood pressure. So I just get rid of that and I'm working with whole numbers again. So like I said before, I like to use benchmarks. Um, 18, there's two more to get to 20. So from 20 to 90 is 70. And then you have three more to 75. So your lower measurement is 75. So here you have your map goal and map ranges. All right, back to the other stuff. I know this sounds remedial, but being able to do this type of math on the fly, under pressure, is an essential skill required of anyone administering anesthesia. I want to talk you through another way that I do math quickly in my head, and that's just by doing it the old-fashioned way. I know that 8 cannot be subtracted from 3, so that I'll have to borrow from the 9, and making that 8. 8 minus 1 is 7, and because I borrowed from the 9, the 3 now becomes 13. 13 minus 8 is 5, leaving you with 75. So now let's talk about some other ways that you would use division and multiplication in algebra. When we are mixing medications, sometimes they come in concentrated forms. Because imagine if your anesthesia cart had big sizes of normally used concentrations. Vials would be this big, this big, and you wouldn't be able to fit every single thing into your anesthesia machine. For example, you can have a 2cc vial, which means there's 2 milliliters of liquid, that contains 10 milligrams of Versed or Midazolam. So that 2cc vial is holding exactly 10 milligrams of that medication. So 10 divided by 2 easily is 5. That means that every single cc contains 5 milligrams of Versed. Now let's talk about a different concentration. Let's talk about Ondansetron, Zofran. A lot of times that concentration is 4 milligrams within a 2 cc vial. So doing that same type of math, 4 divided by 2, each cc has 2 milligrams of Zofran in it. Like I said before, different drugs come in different concentrations. However, same drugs can come in different concentrations. So not only do you have to be careful of that, you also have to take that into consideration when you are diluting your drugs and figuring out how you want to administer it later. So that's what the next part of this video is going to be about. Figuring out how to dilute drugs, choosing the syringe that you want, and doing that math for that. concentrated in smaller vials. So sometimes you have to take those vials and it might be in a 1cc vial or 2cc vial and you have to dilute that and spread out that medication into a larger um, syringe. Like I mentioned earlier, Zofran typically comes in this concentration, 4 milligrams in 2 milliliters. And what's great um, about most vials is that it has a concentration on there for you. 
So there's two milligrams in every milliliter. Uh, and if you guys are getting confused, milliliter CC is mixed interchangeably. Frequently, we're giving the full four milligrams. However, let's say you were in peds, pediatrics for those who don't know, and you wanted to give a smaller dose. What could you do? You could grab a one CC or TB syringe and grab one CC out of here. Like this tells you, one cc has two milligrams. So let's say that you only wanted to give one milligram. How much would you give? That's pretty simple. If you wanted to give one milligram of this, you would give half of a cc. Let's move on to this drug, hydralazine. As you can see, there's 20 milligrams per ml in here. I'm not giving anybody 20 milligrams of hydralazine off the bat. Some people might, it may be just me being new or, you know, very, really cautious. I'm not doing it. So there's different ways that you can dilute this. If 20 milligram, if there's 20 milligrams per milliliter, what are some different size syringes that we could use? We could use a 5cc syringe, which I don't have here with me, or we can use a 10cc syringe. So my total volume in this syringe would be 10 with 20 milligrams of a drug added to it. So 20 divided by 10 would give you two, meaning that there's two milligrams in every single CC here. Two milligrams, four milligrams, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Let's say we had a five cc syringe here. 20 milligrams divided by five would give you four, which would mean that each milligram has four, excuse me, which would mean that each milliliter has four milligrams of the drug in it. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So how do we mix this? Remember, there's 20 milligrams in one ml. This one ml, and you need to add it to fill the rest. So one ml only takes up this here. You still have nine other ones to, to account for. You fill it with nine other cc's of normal saline. Let's take the five cc syringe. A cc in, if this has one ml in it already, and the syringe has five mls in it, this medication accounts for one of it. And that means you have four other ones that you must account for. So you would take this one CC and add it to four other um, CCs of. The examples I just included were only two of the hundreds of drugs that we use in anesthesia. A lot of the times we do some things from memory because we're doing them every day. We're drawing up Versed every day, fentanyl every day, propofol. A lot of those drugs we do draw up and use pretty much every single day. Um, blood pressure medications that we use every day, phenylephrine syringes that we use every day, um, ephedrine, and so we're seeing those vials, we know those vials, if we, if we come into work every single day at that same facility, we know typically what is on those vials. However, you always, 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 always check the concentration that is on the vial. So always, before you literally fill your syringe up, look at the concentration and say, is this what I'm okay? And this is what I'm doing. Now, I wanna stress this, that this is not all encompassing of all the types of anesthesia math that you can use. You can use math to figure out your oxygen saturation. You can use other types of math to figure out the resistance in your tube and your patient. That's not what this video is about. I wanted to strictly talk about the math that is used every single day. In other videos to follow, I want to talk about infusions and mixing your own infusion medications and maybe some more difficult math problems to give you guys more examples. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope it clarified things for you. I hope it encouraged you so that you know that you can do this as well. 
Please leave any comments below, ask any questions. Um, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in my next one. I count up in intervals. Without it, I'm miserable. Don't want to fall off, so I'm all in my bag. Thinking God like it's biblical. I know it's going to solve every problem I have. I bought on a principle. Remember the teachers was all on my ass. Now look all of them pitiful. And all of a sudden, I'm so good at math. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. Count it.